Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and today I'm going to do a quick video on creating a morphing sign bank in Reactor. And to begin with, I'm going to be working with an ensemble I created previously and I'll provide a link to that video in the video description. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to come out with a new reactor tutorial every week. All right, so the ensemble I'm starting with is just a bare bones sign bank setup. And um, we can draw the amplitude of the partials into this event table here. And the ratio and phases are set at their default values. Alright, so when we look at the structure, uh, there's not a whole lot going on here. And I'm going to duplicate this event table in order to create our morph. And then we will um, read out the values from both event tables and use a crossfader to um, morph between them. Um, so you could definitely accomplish what we're about to do with one event table, but I like the two table method for a couple different reasons. Um, first is that I find it to be the simplest to set up, and the second is that um, you get a visual representation of both tables at the same time on your panel view. All right, so like I said, we're going to want to crossfade between the two tables. So we'll run the outputs of both tables into the inputs of a crossfader. And our x value to the crossfade is going to choose which point we're at between our first set of partials and our second part of par um, set of partials. So when x is equal to 0, we're going to read the first event table. When x is equal to 1, we're going to use the second event table. And when it's somewhere in between, we're going to be morphing between the two. However, this means that we can't just read the tables one time on a new gate press. It means we need to constantly be reading through the tables so that we can morph from point A to point B with all the partials that we have. So I'm going to delete this gate and separator objects here and replace them with a constant event stream. So we're using this iteration module to read out our event tables, and we're going to trigger the iteration module um, at the control rate, which by default is going to be 400 hertz. So we're going to read out these tables 400 times a second. And depending on the value of x going into the crossfader, um, that's going to be which table or a combination of tables gets sent to and used for our sign bank. Okay, so I added a system info module, which will give us a constant stream of events at the control rate out of the CR output, which stands for control rate. And one other edit we need to make is currently we're using the gate output of the iteration to trigger the apply input of the sign bank. And what that does is it applies all of the changes to the sign bank that have been made. Um, however, if you give it a value that's greater than 1, it also resets the phases of each oscillator. It starts each oscillator again at 0. And we don't really want to do that 400 times a second, because if we do, we're just going to end up with a sound that sounds like it's playing at 400 hertz, no matter what pitch we're trying to play it at, because it's constantly re-triggering 400 times a second. So what we want to do is just make sure that no positive events get sent to the apply input of the sign bank from our iteration module. And we can use a simple separation module for that. This is just going to block any event equal to 0, from, or equal to any value greater than 0 from traveling to the sign bank. 
All right, so finally, we want to add a X input for our crossfade module. And this is going to be what allows us to morph between our two sets of partials. I'm going to use an ADSR envelope for this. So we're going to start at, uh, you know, this envelope is going to start with having an output of zero. So we'll start with the first set of partials, and as it raises towards one, we'll morph into the second set of partials, and when it falls back to the sustain, we'll start morphing back to set one. And you can replace um, this setup with something else if you prefer. You could use an LFO or you know any any signal that was giving you an output between zero or one would really work here. I'm just going to use an envelope because I think it's simple and has um, some pretty good effects. But one problem it will give us is that it's an audio stream and our crossfader is currently set up to accept events and that's because the crossfader itself is feeding into an event only module. So we need a way to translate our envelope from an audio signal into an event signal and to do that we can use a simple A to E module. All right, so from here, we want to set up our envelope to receive a gate input. And I'm going to make this gate always be equal to 1 when it's greater than 0. And what that is going to do is um, make the maximum output of the gate always equal to 1 as well. So we'll get the full morph no matter how hard the um, full incoming velocity is. And to change that, you can just get rid of the compare module that I added. And one last thing I want to do is trigger the apply input of the sign bank on a new gate input. So I'm going to use a separator to do that. And we'll only take the inputs out of the high, sorry, the outputs from the high output of the separator and we'll merge them with the other events that are being sent to the apply input of our sign bank. And this is just going to reset all of our oscillators on a new gate. All right, so let's just rearrange for a second and then we can do some simple tests. Make sure everything works. All right, so this method can give you a lot of interesting sounds that would be pretty difficult to make via conventional subtractive synthesis. And um, there's a lot of room for growth here too. Like I said earlier, there's a lot of different ways that you could control the morph between the first and second set of partials. One problem is that the event tables do not store snapshot data. Uh, I'm going to do a tutorial very soon on overcoming this limitation with event tables, so stay tuned for that. All right, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please check out our website, and I'll see you next week.